is essential. It's real simple. Without law and order, there is no freedom. Without law and order, freedom ends. Without law and order, there is anarchy. What's happened in Seattle this week is but a small example of how far the left will go to satisfy the progressive extremists and surrender our cities to them of what it will be like without law and order. And we cannot have it. Now don't get me wrong, I said last week that the sadistic, torturous murder of George Floyd by Minneapolis police officer Chauvin deserved the harshest punishment. Not just murder two, but murder one. And I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. There is much that needs to change. It's why we have a Congress, state legislatures, school boards, community organizations. That's why we have elections. But American cities, subjected to outright domestic terrorism is a scene reminiscent of some futuristic movie like Escape from New York, where the government lets a city filled with criminals govern themselves, where lawlessness and anarchy thrive, and we cannot have it. Law-abiding Americans witness the destruction and the looting of businesses and neighborhoods, the burning of property, including churches, all allegedly in the name of George Floyd, in horror. Liberal Democrat mayors and governors have surrendered to rioters, anarchists, and looters, allowing them to blow off steam. We sat stunned watching the 3rd Precinct police in Minneapolis literally run out by these anarchists. We watched the same happen in Seattle on the mayor's order, thinking, this can't be America. This must be some third world country. We cannot have it. Now permit me a politically incorrect question. How many families in this country whose loved ones were victims of brutal homicides have been allowed to blow off steam, pillage and plunder the property of others because the system didn't work the way it was supposed to? When the rights of law-abiding citizens are subjugated and destroyed by those seeking change by committing crimes, we must demand they be stopped. When anarchists want to end the civilized society by defunding the police, they throw us back to the Wild West where vigilante justice reigned. Taking large chunks of police budget to give to mental health and community groups and eliminating police response on calls like domestic violence, which by the way is among the most dangerous calls police respond to, I fear for battered women. Should we now start negotiating violent crimes against women? Is that even a negotiable issue? Or do we wait until the first social worker or mental health worker is killed and then demand the cops be brought back? In Seattle, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone known as CHAZ announces its area is outside the United States. The police department is now the people's department. The height of hypocrisy, a six to seven block area occupied by the ones who paint borders and guns and ID checks, they now have a border and some have reportedly seen people armed. But Seattle Mayor Durkin thinks she's at Woodstock. Listen to this one. Lawfully gathering and expressing First Amendment rights, demanding we do better as a society, and providing true equity for communities of color is not terrorism, it is patriotism. Mayor, how many of your new Chaz squatters work in Seattle, pay taxes in Seattle, or even vote there? Now that they've used you, they want you gone. Maybe you and Mayor de Blasio's wife, Shirlane, should take a vacation to Nirvana, which according to her, is wherever there are no police. Ah, uh, leave your police protection behind. They demand all prisoners of color be retried, that the police department be dismantled, that prisons be replaced with a restorative, transformative accountability program. I guess victims should be on notice. They need to have a transformative accountability session with their rapists. After all, the rapists won't be going to prison. How did we even get here? How does it end? When does it end? 
When will police officer killed during these so-called peaceful protests and the 700 injured and some hospitalized be honored? How long do we live in fear that there will be no response when we call police for help? How long before other crime-ridden cities run by these Democrats yield to these anarchists? 10 cops quit SWAT today in Florida. Cops, the ones willing to put their lives on the line for people they don't even know. They've lost their morale. They've lost support. They're abused and laughed at. We don't pay them nearly enough. They don't deserve to be hated, disrespected, and vilified. How long before New York City becomes the real Gotham? So what's the answer? What's the solution? On the right, it's simple. We want law and order, accountability for lawbreakers, and protection for law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. On the far left, defund and dismantle of those who serve and protect, and an end to real punishment for those who live lawlessly. So how do we come together? How do we heal and move on from this ugly chapter in our country's history? Sadly, I don't have the answer tonight, but I know taking over the streets and driving police out of station houses and residents from their homes isn't it. Maybe if we agree to hear each other out, we can find some common ground. God help the United States if we can't. And that's my open. Let me know what you think on my Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine.